So I'm joined this evening with good friend Mark McLean again, uh, all the way over from across the pond in Birmingham. And we're here to to give you another another interview, another show, another conversation between two men of faith. Um, and we were wondering, uh, you know, what we we're talking about. So anyway, Mark, do you want to kick off? What are your ideas for this for this interview this evening? And uh, where do you think we should lead this? Well, I think uh, with a lot that's going on with me and also the fact that this Sunday coming is Pentecost Sunday, so why not speak about a little bit on the, the Holy Spirit? Yes. Which we'll never cover in an abyss, but we can maybe like give something for it, get ourselves and our viewers ready for Pentecost Sunday. Yeah. I, I always think when, because this is, even when I was a seminarian, when you think about the Holy Spirit, you know, the uh, the, the Holy Ghost, um, Santo Spiritus, uh, even, to, even to think about him, it was like this un, unaman unmanageable, like it was, it's very hard to it, it push it into an image in our mind of who he was. And then, you know, years later, uh, it kind of hit me, you know, to look at Christ I, and and you know to know this is his spirit you know that you know he had to leave to give it to us and i don't know if this is the whole theological side of of it um but i thought it would be humble enough we can tease out some ideas on it and and uh you know how how he works in our life because there are times when you know you'd be moved by the the spirit to do x y and z and you said oh, i don't understand this but you kind of trust what the holy spirit is telling you and uh and he really does open doors in in most unexpected ways, and I think, I think it'd be sad if we let this Pentecost Sunday go by without actually, um, actually consciously calling him down. This, you know, creator spirit of God calling him down to renew the church and to renew our apostolate. Um, you know, you, you, I've started the Men of St. Joseph's prayer group and you're starting the Men of St. Joseph's prayer group in your side. And I, and I, I was out praying this evening and I, just, I was just thinking if every single baptized Catholic man in Ireland and UK that, that goes to mass did that, started a prayer group with either maybe two or three people. You know, how transformed our church would be, you know, bringing, calling down the Holy Spirit into our prayer to guide and enlighten us and lead us to to a deeper renewal of the faith. It was just, you know, you have these great aspirations, but, you know, what is the Holy Spirit asking us to do? And um, and where where do you think this should go? And you know, what, what are your thoughts anyway on it? Yeah, I think for what I've learned over a good journey now, at least 20 years of going from, cradle Catholic practice in the faith to trying to live the faith when it becomes personal, becomes full of conviction, comes loving, and you're very much trying to do in a way to become a saintly person. And you start realizing how active God is in your life uh, every day. And that takes time, that takes people that you meet, that takes encounters communities, prayer groups, pilgrimages, everything and anything, lives of the saints, the writings, what is it they got that's still there for us as well, for all of us way back from the Desert Fathers to now, every one of us has the opportunity to have that fullness of the Holy Trinity living in us. And it was quite refreshing last weekend that kind of got me in a good place this week for Pentecost. And I believe the the homily was going back to John's gospel, Jesus's prayer. You know, I pray that they'll be one with us just as we are one. And that line alone really hit me. What is it he's praying for just before he goes to his passion, the crucifixion and the death, and he's still outpouring in his last words, you know, it is finished. You know, it's mm. everything was given for us in that union and how do we get that union when we're blocked with sin and everything else is the fact that it's constantly open for God's grace. And that's where the Holy Spirit for me is coming more in. I heard that my parish priest when I was a young boy I actually come to mind. Um, he, often, he, he says, you know, when it was like Pentecost or that, and again, just a normal Sunday mass, Catholics don't show much charismatic or worship or 
or something different that you'd find with other areas of the renewal or denominations. But he said, you know, the Holy Spirit's probably the most neglected of the Trinity. Yeah. I don't know if that's still true now that I've had an open way of seeing charismatic renewal and and I know Pope Francis is bringing it all under a new name titled Charis, I believe. I yeah. think everyone still used to call it charismatic renewal. But um yeah, I, I kind of just find that right, what does that mean then for us to be united? What is it we need to let go of to take the blockers off and realize Jesus, God came to be us to show the way to open up the floodgates. Yeah. You know, for us to be united, just as he and the Father are united, like to be united with him, to live in the mystical life of the Trinity. I mean, yeah. Where do you go? <laughs> I, 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 when I was just thinking of the word Pentecost and some people that follow our videos, we often use words that a lot of people don't understand. And, and I was just thinking, maybe I should explain the word Pentecost. So to, to kind of, uh, so we can put this word in its proper context. And, and I know many Catholics think and probably know this, but the term Pentecost comes from the Greek Pentecost day, meaning 50th. And it were, uh, refers to the Jewish festival of uh, Shavuot celebrated on the 50th day after Pentecost, after Passover. Uh, so it's also known as the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of 50 Days. And, you know, this this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you know, it came 50 days after after um, after Easter. And, you know, it's um, it's it's you're true. You're really right when you say like the Holy Spirit is the forgotten uh, person of the Holy Tr Trinity. Um, you know, if we if we under if we understand if we understood, you know, the relationship we'll have with the with the Spirit of Christ that comes to help us, to lead us, to guide us, to give us peace, to to kind of you know to to bring us along, um, and uh, you know. <laughs> It was strange when you talk about the charismatic movement. I put up a video with Terry Quinn once and somebody commented on it. You'd almost think these charismatic people think that the Holy Spirit is God. And I was thinking, he is God, you know, because some people think, <laughs> do you know what? You almost think that the Holy Spirit is God, the way that these charismatics carry on worshipping. The... <laughs> and, um, and, and the reality is, you know, we, we, he, the Holy Spirit is as equal a person of the Holy Trinity as as the Father and the Son. You know, he's not a lesser. He's not the third. He's not the first. He's not. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 all or nothing. It's all unity. It's all love. Um, and, you know, we should call down the spirit of Christ into our situations. You know, come Holy Spirit, come create our spirit. Um Veni creator spiritus, mentis toward visit, come and visit the minds, our minds, and, and renew our lives. And um, I, I, there's there's a few instances instances where I've had this this kind of um strong movement of the Holy Spirit, you know, to, to actually do something, to go somewhere, and um, and I always find it a bit strange when when I get these promptings and, the, and you're kind of balancing out. Well, should I should I do it or should I not? And you're weighing it up and like uh, go and meet the, a certain person you know and and you're and when you meet them and then you're and 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 you and you know what this was the this was this was from god this is what he's calling me to do and you know and and it's quite it's just mind-blowing to think you know if 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 christians if catholics call down the power of the holy spirit what could we do you know really what could we do in the church uh, in our society around us and um, we could transform you know to, to transform lives and minds. I mean, it's it's mind blowing in a way. Yeah, I, I think a couple of things that would come to mind listening to you there. You know, that first one was like, well, if the Holy Spirit is God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity, one God, and it's a mystery that's going to be there for eternity. Not even the angels have the full knowledge of God, although it's much higher than ours. But they can't contain God themselves with that. Yeah. Her knowledge and intellect. So there is an infinity of God, but look how much he's revealed in a way 
not just through scriptures, but the tradition. You look through the history. And right now I'm reading the book by Cantalamessa. I've had it again on this shelf for years, never read it, but I'm glad I am now. It's uh, Veni Creator Spiritus, Come Holy Spirit. And he's going through that beautiful hymn, those words in each part of the chapter. And from, from memory, just starting the book, I'm quite early into it, just like 20 odd pages. But he speaks like even again, like this mystery of God, but how in time more has been revealed. And when we look at it from today's point, we can throw it back to the councils to make the definition of what the church believes, you know, from Trent back to Nicaea. The spirit was always there in the beginning. You know, yeah. he was hovering over the abyss. And Cantilla Messick is into great details about, you know, how God spoke and the, the, and the spirit created. And then, of course, the word of God, as John says, was Jesus, you know, in our Ton Logos, in the beginning was the word. Um, the reason I'm going with that is because the three persons of the Trinity have always been active in complete union from the beginning. Yeah. And I think in a way what it was he was saying is when you look back to the beginning of Genesis through to the apocalypse, the father prepares the way for the son and the son prepares the way for the Holy Spirit. And what people, especially Catholics, I would dare to say, they're not realizing the times that we live in it is the time of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus says, I will be with you till the end of time, he's physically not with us. He's with us in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, he's there. And it's the actions of the Holy Spirit. That's why at Pentecost, when the flames came upon the apostles, when they started speaking in tongues, and then, of course, let's get into the gifts of the Holy Spirit that accompany it. But what's the purpose of the Holy Spirit using us in this way? Is the fact that it's to build up his church, his kingdom on earth. Our Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And how do we get that well completed? Is this new Pentecost that I believe we're being prepared for more and more? And the more we tap into that understanding and probably say that fact and reality, the more we're going to clearly see our purpose in life and what God's asking and wanting of us, why he's created us uniquely. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. why... And I think, like I was saying in the previous video, that's where these um, called and gifted, the discernment process pack that I'm doing with the community, understanding more charisms. It's not just those ones that you'll find maybe within groups over the years, you know, want to pray in tongues, want miracles and all this. It could be all many different types of ways of service, but it's always service for the one purpose of building up the kingdom, that salvation of souls, coming to know the knowledge of God, the truth, his love, and being yeah. set free. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, it's whenever I think about it, it, it just blows your mind in prayer, and you're there thinking, what, what, what have we got here that we're not giving to the world? Um you know, especially, and I, and I, and I hate criticizing clergy because uh, I think you know it's very easy to lay to lay blame, but I do think priestly formation is so lacking sometimes in using what Christ has left to His church. You know, you Christ has given you a life. He's given you a vocation. He's given you time to bring His Spirit into the church, and and so many priests they can they're they're not able to actually preach with the holy spirit they're not they're actually to say or can to use the holy spirit so their words carry into the hearts and minds of the faithful with one yeah. uh, and and the only and the reason that that we he, this has to be done so is that the faithful can receive this gift and give it to everybody that's that's that 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 needs it because i was in in prayer i was just thinking you know what we get at mass is not for all of us that are there at mass. It's for all of those who are not at mass. We have to go out and give what we've received to those who haven't received it yet. You know, and you have yeah. drug addicts, you have homeless, you have refugees, you have depressed, lonely, all of these people that, that need what we have received. And we're not giving it to them. You know, we stay in our, our nice echo chambers, our beautiful 
communities which is okay you know it's good to raise good kids but you know this message has to go out to those that haven't heard it and we're not doing it we're failing the church in ireland and england and in europe where we're failing miserably in this mission of evangelization because we're not able to give them this incredible encounter that we know exists that's the that's the mind blowing that 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 kind of knocks me every time when i go into prayer to know that this is true to to actually know that this is true this is mind blowing it's oh my god this is actually true this isn't a myth this 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 faith is so real and this encounter is so real and people's lives would be transformed if they knew it um I, I, I think um, I think on that note that you were saying when I was in the seminary as well, there, there were some good guys there, but I think it, there was more of a mentality than a spirit-filled faith, and I know that's a broad judgment, but it's based on impressions, it's based on four years with the guys, eating at meals every day, travelling into uni, having a drink now and again out for a meal, whatever. It, it was almost like they were in Rome, especially. It was the books, you know. The st- I mean, some of the guys were very studious, very intellectual, but I kind of sense that was where the currency was. That was the power. That was the best way of a reputation. That was the best way they believe for their career as a priest and wherever that may go. And I'm sitting there saying, like, you give up a career to become a priest. You give up everything. For service, and if you're serving yourself, even if it's a 90-10 split, it needs to be 100% undivided service. And I kind of sense that it was it was very worldly in that mentality. They may have had their prayers or devotions and, and different things like that, but unless you could give some intellectual debate or presentation, that was everything. And there was a good priest I actually stayed with during uh, one of my parish placements, a lovely old man. I mean, he's in his 70s, he's due to retire at the time, and he'd done many years in Africa and all that, and everybody loved him from any parish. And he was so, so humble, never raised his voice, very, very gentle. But when it came to the Sunday Mass, after all these years as a priest, he's picking up a book of homilies and using one of them for his Sunday Mass, and I'm like, you want me to preach? <laughs> I could, because uh, the way I was at the time, maybe a bit of youthful confidence or gullibility, but I, I don't doubt the conviction and the fire I had. And again, I feel everything in Rome, everything I had, Rome depleted month by month, year after year. And it's not like the formation wasn't great, because in seminary, we're told, or oh, back in the 80s, the 90s, it was terrible formation. And then John Paul II gave us the encyclical Pastores Dabo Bobbies, I Will Give You Shepherds, and then the intellectual formation, pastoral formation, spiritual formation, human formation, and each one of the... And yeah, it was all presented, documentations, the right to the talk, it's in the booklets, these booklets are copied to the bishops. But is it looking good for him? Because what was in paper in these booklets, it wasn't loved fully. And trying to have those conversations, it's like, I mean, having a prayer group, a, a charismatic group, if you want to call it, you know, praise and worship, you can do it. I remember someone telling me they were at a parish once and these three or four priests got together. And they're just, thank you, Lord. We pray to you, Lord. They just did it. <laughs> But it's all, I think there's always this mentality in the Catholic Church. It's like everyone behind you is watching you. You have yeah. to just sit there and do your little yeah. bit, you know. And yeah. Anything I, I, out of cat, even a sneeze or something, it's like, who saw that? You need to let that stuff go. I don't even know why it's there, because there's still a point of self there, even like that consciousness. And um, I think it's a mentality to a lot of point. And I think if people are like that year in, year out, all their days, still being faithful, going to their Sunday Mass, let's say, but are they getting it? Are they getting yeah. this difference of it's not just a register, it's an experience, it's a life worth living every single minute of every day? Because where's your personal encounter? Where's your personal relationship? Yeah. And sometimes it's wonderful when you get one-in-ones with many people because then you realise you can't just give a broad judgment. But why is that individual, 
this individual, that individual coming together and engulfing the parish every Sunday, yeah. you know, in the community. You know, yeah. I, I just kind of find that there's so much more that Catholics need a jolt. And I, I think when you speak of the spirit, the spirit of truth, where's that spirit of truth coming with the preaching of the church just now? The clergy, those who are supposed to speak and preach the church, defend the faith, defend the truth, defend God yeah, in the public sphere and his will and his commandments and his divine law. Where is that spirit of truth? Because if they don't have the Holy Spirit in them, like if they're not given the Holy Spirit the freedom to live in them, how are they supposed to pass it on? Yeah. Through their preaching. Like like Peter did at Pentecost. There they were cowering up in the in the room. Yeah. Hiding away, waiting to be lambs in the slaughter. But then they come out with the courage of lions after yeah. that experience. Yeah. And five thousand were converted. Yeah, and it was a fact of three thousand. I can't remember. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah, but uh, just on that note as well, what does that mean then to have the Holy Spirit with us? I mean, yes, we're baptized, but Cantalamessa highlighted in his book there. There's three ways that we're described with the Holy Spirit. Again, we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, clothed in the Holy Spirit, and then filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the baptism and all that's there, but you look at ourselves our clothing, it's part of us, it moves with us. This is the way I was kind of taking it a little bit the first few minutes of reading it. It's there with us, but then being filled with the Holy Spirit is the one, it's really the interior. Yeah, yeah. Our, what, exactly. what, what, how do we present ourselves? I mean, I was at a talk last night uh, with an evangelist, Derek Williams, who came to the parish and he says a few things that was quite obvious, but I never thought of it, at least that way. And it was, you know, that way it was a nice refreshment, uh, some th some things that he says. But that interior life is there for the taking. Yeah. You know, what trees of Avila and certain saints like Padre Pio or mystics, you know, they get to the, like Luisa Picaretta with the divine will. Jesus is telling many saints and many mystics from back and the early church fathers, the desert fathers, right through to this present day, mystical marriage, getting to that higher interior life, to the point where we can be living the beatitude on earth, as he's saying. And yeah. this is what's getting done. And he said one last thing, I'll, I'll stop my rant right now, was the fact that, this was the duh moment, but wasn't it refreshing to hear? He says, this Sunday is the dawn of the final decade leading to the 2,000 years of the Catholic Church. 2033. Yeah. You know, 10 yeah. years down as of this weekend, yeah. that 2,000th anniversary of Pentecost. And he says, when you're reading these mystics and saints that have been alive or are alive, they're repeating the same echoes over the centuries. And I take in as well, as you know, with the Marian apparitions from Fatima, Garabandal, Akita, Medjugorje. Jesus is going to the individual mystics. Our Lady is going to the children and the visions. And you can see the parallels going the same way. It is for a new Pentecost. And as Mariana says, it's not about the doom and gloom. That Our Lady is planning to change the face of the entire world. Yeah. We'll understand why she, she wants us to have more children. Yeah. Well, there's so many mystery, but Look at the way the world's going. I know. You know, I know. look at the way, I mean, this great reset of 2030, keep it because the great reset coming from heaven is going to be so much better. Yeah. <laughs> and that is the parallel. It always yeah. is. And I believe we are the generation that are going to see everyone that's going to live to the statistical age of 70 odds. I'm 38 just now. I don't know, age you are, I don't know if you want to say it, but 50. I think anyone at the next 20 years plus is going to experience and see so much that God's been planning for us all along. And the yeah. only thing that's delayed it and stopped it all this time is ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's always been us that's stopped it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've no, I mean, what are the fruits of the Holy Spirit are, um, I, you know, I was just thinking when you were saying that, I mean, the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is to, is theosis, 
is this age old it goes back to the early churches to its deification is to become like like god like christ is to be it's, it's a process of uh, of a heart transplant of replacing our and and the holy spirit will come in to to give us the eyes the ears the mind of christ so that you know christ would have the way he would talk the way he would see the way he would pray and it's this these are the fruits of the holy spirit that come down so that not for our benefit, but to to always shine glory to to heaven, and I I think that's a real mark of it. When 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 you're just when a person that that receives these gifts, they're like a mirror holding up a mirror that's kind of that's taking the light of the sun and and shining it and shining it mm -hmm. elsewhere. You know that it's not coming all on themselves, saying, "Look at me, I'm the greatest." You know, if you think of Padre Pio, you know he was always pointing to the Eucharist and the Mass. And, uh, you know, and you point, you need to start pointing the mirror, you know, reflecting the light that you've received, the gifts you received to others it's to build up the church, you know, uh, and I don't think this is easy. And that's why it's a process, you know, the, the, it's a process of sanctification of, 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 of continually, of continually listening and listening and, and giving it to others. But it's, it, I mean, the gifts, these gifts are, are, are actually not for us. I mean, they are for us, but for the to, to give to others to you know to build up the church, and we're not using them. <laughs> it's not being used. You know, you go into mass, and sometimes, and I feel sorry for some priests because they just weren't given the formation. They just, and it's not their fault. It's to just they weren't taught to. They weren't taught to use the Holy Spirit in their preaching, and then the the you know the homily will be, and Jesus and and, and and ten minutes you know very short masses you know from this time to this time, and so but I've been in masses which say Father Brendan Walsh, very charismatic priest here in Ireland, and I and I had a lot of doubts about this, but he's a very charismatic, and he'll give he could give a homily for an hour at a mass, and you're enthralled. You're sitting there at the edge of your seat listening to this homily, which is so filled with the Holy Spirit that your heart is, you just cannot sleep the whole night afterwards. <laughs> and it's not just me. Other people have experienced this. You've been drawn into this mystery of faith in listening to a homily, which is actually full of the Holy Spirit. You've been drawn into this mystery and then you're, you can't sleep. Like, I don't know, Terry Quinn in Ireland People would call him very Protestant because he was Protestant for many years and he came back to the Catholic Church. He's a layman um, and preaches up in um, Knockbridge, the other, up near Loud. And, you know, people would call him Protestant. But if you ever listen to his uh, preaching, to his 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 way of 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 preaching the gospel, of preaching of um, ministry, I mean, this man is full of the Holy Spirit. Like he he really does, you know, call it call down, and he uses it to try and give this this message out. And we're we're failing the church. I just think we're 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 so desperately failed. And what Christ is doing in this moment in time is because so many people haven't used these gifts, he's gone out to the byways and the highways and he's raising up people that are not educated they don't have seminary formation and doctorates and phds or been to the gregorian and he's giving them these gifts and he says use them to build up my church use them to build yeah. up he is doing it because i'm meeting these people i'm meeting these people that are not trained that are not formed don't have doctorates but they have faith they have faith and then the Holy Spirit has come in and filled them and they are transforming their community around them, the people around them. Um, and you can see the fruits. What are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Well, to bring unity in the church, to bring peace, uh, joy, healing into souls, all of these different fruits, you know, strength, wisdom, all of these, you know, you can see it in them and you can see it in the people around them. You know, they, they're different people. Um, and you know, I I just I if, if this was let out into the church in Ireland, I mean, as I said, if every man, woman, if every Catholic in Ireland gave one hour a week, one hour, 
to the faith that is not just their own personal prayer and going to mass, but say getting out there to have a prayer group, to have a a, a Bible study group, to uh, lead kids in prayer once a week, to, you know, to do that missionary work in our church, which is so badly needed. If we did that, mm-hmm. we'd be transforming Ireland or and the UK as Catholics, but we're not even Nation. able to get, we're not able to give the one hour, you know, or, ha- you know, we're not able, you, you ask people, no, their schedule is full, full life. I work nine to five and then I have to do this and then I have to do that. And it's, and, and I had no time to do this. And I said, okay, that's okay. So we've, we've, our schedule so full, we don't have time for God. We don't have time, you know, and, and we, you know, we've boxed our faith into the Sunday mass and maybe a bit of prayer during the day. And we've people dying of suicide in our society. We have people literally dying of suicide, of addictions, because nobody will talk to them. There isn't, like, you know, there are groups that love for it, but on the purely human level, you know, oh, I'm um, the Samaritans. People need to see your face. You know, it's well, it's all well and good phoning a, 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 a line. And I, and I do think these telephone lines are good. But put your face out there and say, look, I am here. If you need to talk, I'm not an expert don't have a degree in this but i can talk and this is what can transform the church yeah i think in that note as well if anyone's listening in that i've i've no problem in terms of speaking to anyone when it comes to my faith that I, I, I always expect there's always one person that comes to my mind and say oh can you explain that then you know where does st thomas say that or what philosophical way with blah blah i'm not what you're talking about i'm talking about here and what i'm saying is not a logical what I'm saying is not an intellectual thing. It's something in here. And the more I listen to you, the more I'm wondering, do you have that? But yet here you are in seminary. Why are you in seminary studying to be a priest of Christ? Why? Because all you keep talking about is books, books, books. And it was there was one uh, in that note, the same person, in my twenties, I was the same, but I had the community life before going there. I was come and see with the friars, the renewal, the Carthusians, Medjugorje pilgrimages, everything else, reading and I was there, and I'm like this is the time for now. I had no doubt and conviction of that, but going in retreats and hearing it all and wanting to go out there and doing it. We were in, uh, it was up from the Circus Maximus in Rome. And there was this couple, English couple, and talking to them, because obviously you're in Rome, there weren't any British about. But talking away, and the same guy with the shirt and chinos talking away to this lady, and, and when we told her obviously we're studying to be priests and that, that obviously opens up a doorway. Uh, but the more she was talking, the more she was on about why she's hurt with the church, she was Catholic and all this. And he's like, so, well, tell me, what do you think about uh, this then? So why would you do it? And I'm like, this guy's going with the debate round already. He says, well, we'll leave it there now because we're obviously having a lot of drag, but it was lovely to meet you and bye-bye. And um, I'm standing there with her. And I can't remember all the way, but I started talking away to her as well. I says, I know he's, he's, he's very intellectual and that. And I said, she's like, I don't think he was understanding a word I was trying to say. I says, I get it because you've been hurt and you are where you're at just now and talking away. And whatever it was I says to her, it was like I was given the hint that I understood but I said something about God's way and you just saw the tears. You just saw the tears. And the cutting it short at the end, she gave us a good hug and I left her to have a good night. But what a difference. And that's not because I take credit for it. I could see the damage with the debate and I could see the tears with opening up the heart for love of God from what I was saying. I've yeah. seen that a few times with people because when I'm talking, I'm not debating. And that becomes very much... The atmosphere yeah. of seminaries and my four years experience is the debate world. Yeah. You know, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. But I remember it was at Father Sudat that said the stigmatist priest in Croatia. If you're not ready to give the if you if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't give the Holy Spirit. And if you're not ready to go out there and give the Holy Spirit and the fullness of the truth, you're not ready to be a priest. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I just find as if it's this social machine, it's the church machine, just let things roll over, keep the mask going, keep the plate money coming in. And that's not lasting. It's crumbling and they still stick to it and it crumbles yeah. more and they still stick to it. Every time I'm looking at a new priest, it's taking over a new parish. It's always an African priest. 
Yeah. I'm noticing that more and more here in Britain. Yeah. Yeah. I'm noticing it quite a lot just now. But it's the case. So what do we do then? These people they probably have well in hearts, but they don't know where to go, what to do, because they only know their church. Just start looking at other groups, start going on Google to prayer meetings near me. Speak to people in your parish that you know might have been in a pilgrimage or been in a retreat somewhere. Take it from there. Look up the things New Dawn, Youth 2000, Eucharistic Adoration, Rosary Crusade, and other ones happening in Glasgow tomorrow again. Um, prayer groups are there all the way. And if it's the case you need to start one up yourself, invite a couple of friends, go for it. Just yeah. start with the Rosary, that relax your Divina. But what's the process? I was, I was kind of listening to what you were saying there. What do we do? How do we get ourselves tuned in to the Holy Spirit, God's will? How do yeah. we follow it? How do we listen? And and I would say from my own experience, I learn more as time goes on. And when I find, like even talking to you tonight, certain memories from years ago seem to pop into my mind. Sometimes I, I'm starting to believe that they come back because they're serving a purpose for now. Yeah. <laughs> and just go with the flow. It'd be yeah. something very simple like seeing a stained glass uh, Jesus in an old abandoned church that's now a gym saying Carpe Diem sees the day and for the two days you're thinking about moving down is being closer to this good lady and that's what happened to me and now I'm yeah. married <laughs> Yeah. Uh, other times it's a case where you're battling for four years before you finally take the plunge and go to seminary, that's me <laughs> yeah. but as the time goes on and like that um that man was saying last night, one thing the church fathers, desert fathers, the mystics, the saints, from then till now, it's the one thing we have to do, accept, yeah. just receive. Yeah. And sacrament life, confession, I mean, it's the forgotten sacrament. You need to keep yourself clean. Padre Pio says even an empty room gathers dust. Yeah. No one on earth should be longer than one month between confessions. And there is something of a sense of release yeah. and freedom when you get that confessional done and you're living a good life and you're hitting mass and you're going for communion more worthily and you're yeah. really praying with the heart. Listen to the words you say. Don't fly through it. Just start praying and praying and praying. And as early as says, the more you pray, the more you'll take joy in it. Yeah. What might be a hard five minutes becomes an easy five minutes a few days later. What's a struggle of a 15, 20 minute rosary will become easier. Maybe even a little longer because you're taking your time with meaning in the words. That yeah. was my journey. But I'm at the point now where I find like hard times, hardships, feeling at the bottom of life comes to serve a purpose in time as well. And yeah. that is one of your groups educational experiences of the silent god who is yeah. very much intimate in your life and knows everything about you you know the guy says last night if jesus wasn't paying attention to even just one atom in your body you would cease to exist yeah. that is what you call intimacy yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know every yeah. single cell and atom is accounted not just the hair in your head but yeah. every atom in your body is in existence because of God's love right now. Yeah. yeah. Take that in it, for a second. Yeah. But it's how do we listen? And I think it's just a case of doing what we've been told. Live the sacramental life. Pray constantly. Keep yourselves open. And just when you hear something in the TV or the radio or you see something in a book and you see two or three times something's getting repeated, it's becoming in your attention. I'm kind of flown with that right now. Yeah, and I, I'm happy to talk maybe one or two examples where I think because the Holy Spirit is the the gift, but it's how He uses the other charismatic gifts. So people think at confirmation, cradle Catholics, well, fortitude, wisdom, understanding, piety, but what about the gift of miracles? Mm. What about use knowledge? What about like? speaking in foreign languages, infused with, I mean, I think Marino Restrepo, he's never done a theological degree, but after his experience, his mystical experience, he could tell you everything of the church faith. Yeah. You know, it's, and again, it gets back to that point. And that, Padre Pio says, one searches for God in books, but finds him in prayer. Yes. St. Thomas yes. Aquinas, the angelic doctor, the intellect, after his mystical experience, he stopped writing. 
because what he saw and all of his great intellect, he says everything's like straw from what yeah. he's just seen. So well, the books yeah. and intellectual stuff is important because people need to meet others in that level where they're at, and that's where it is, we meet them where they're at. But humility will always be that treasure. Yeah. You know, that's humble, that's the key. That's, that's yeah. the key. That's the key. You know, that I, 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 I sometimes I, I'm, I'm just glad I didn't have a doctorate in theology because sometimes and I'm not saying it's bad. Sometimes it's really good to have you know, if you're if you're blessed to have had the time and the formation to do it. But like because I don't, then I have to be humble and say, look, if I'm speaking about somebody and somebody says, no, Robert, you got that wrong. That's not right. Blah, blah, then you have to say, OK, well, I, I have to be humble and say I got it wrong. Uh, and you learn. So, you know, the humility would build up your faith and then you can be led. But some people were, are so strong. I've done this. This is my idea. And this is the only way it is. And and sadly, sometimes, you know, there are there are communities and, and movements in the church that can be very rigid, that this is the only way that you can that you can move forward and do it this way that, uh, you know, and, and, and sadly, we forget that the Holy Spirit you know, is an encounter in humility uh, and we have to be led, you know, where he wants to renew and renew the faith. And, you know, it's kind of, it, it, it really is key. And it's also important to understand, you know, you were talking about Mariana Restrepo. Some of the most humble souls have the most profound encounters with, in prayer with the Holy Spirit. Like, and like I've met people and I meet them and, they're, these are simple people that you wouldn't guess. And they're living saints. Now, their names aren't out there. They're not priests or bishops or anything. Like but I'm just meeting them and I say, you know, what I wouldn't give to have the level of sanctity that these people have, but they, they have this profound, humble, I mean, it is, it's it's earth shattering sometimes when I meet these and and I and I know that to, to be the case because like Christ gets in and he's working in this, and and these forgotten, you know, they're not the greats. They're they're like the forgotten Cartesian monks and sisters in monasteries that you know will die and never have a have a, a gravestone. But they're profound. They, they they have they have a life of humble prayer, and 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 that's the key because Christ can't work with them. If you if you've filled your life with so much pride and so much self importance, it has to be this way. And and if we're not doing it this way, you know, I can't. And 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 it's not that you know. He said, "Sorry, can you listen to my voice? Can I get in to speak a little in your soul and show you another what I want you to do, and and where I want you to go, um, and and that can only be done with humility. And um, you know, and 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 it's it's very hard to 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 talk about this sometimes with people but it's it's uh, yeah, even in yeah there you go no I, and even in your own failings like if you if you're going through if men are going through addictions and and problems in their life you know the only way because the holy spirit first in order to get rid to, to get the holy spirit into your life you have to get rid of all these blockers so if you've got resentment fears anxieties um, if, if you hate somebody, you know, I hate this person that's done something. If you have all of that in your life, all of this uh, addictions and stuff in your life, the only way you'll get rid of those is humbly saying, I can't do this. I need to get rid of this. Can somebody help me? And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. And once you're you're managed to get rid of that, then you can start in your spiritual life. Um, and that is there is no other way. I mean, I went through this myself. There is no other way but humility. There is zero. There's no other. It's the only door to the spiritual life. It's the only door to enter where you need to go so that the Holy Spirit can get into you. Can't do it any other way. So if, you've, if you're so proud that you that you don't want to change something that God wants to change in your life, you're lost. You have to have humility. Um, and I, I think that's I think, where my sense of strong, actually. I can't, I can't kept myself on. If I know I'm conscious of feeling that, I can't kid myself on because I know God knows my thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're on the ropes in the corner. You need yeah. to let it go. Yeah. But the young the young me definitely had looking back on it, I believed in the time 
It was just a, a heart and fire for God. This big experience, this change of ways of thinking of God, of loving the faith, of prayer. And I wanted to get out there and let everyone have it. And I do believe that's the right thing. That's what God does. The Holy Spirit wants to get out there and do it. And um, But I, I kind of felt along the way, that energy was shared with others who had kind of the same idea, the same experiences. And when we were all together, you start finding exclusivity with some and some get it easier than others and doors open for some and not for you. And you see it more on a human level and resentment can come, jealousy can come, yeah. you know, and then you see, and, and then mainly for me, it was putting me down, feeling down, yeah. Yeah. you know, but here 15 years later, it's like, well, God's never. God loves your heart. He loves your ambition. He, he loves your fire. He loves. Your, but you need to admit you're feeling that because you're in the receiving end. Yeah. And it reminds me of that invitation of Christ. You know those highs you want to go and pray all day, and you want to do these wonderful things, and then when you don't find that experience, you can hardly do a thing. Yeah. It's like, well, you feel that way, and you want to go out and do it because you're on the receiving end of God giving you. But when he takes it away, it's like, oh, I yeah. don't want to do anything. Yeah. That's when you yeah. should be doing it. That's the love. Yeah. And the, the invitation of Christ, one of the quotes I remember, he says, I give you that high and that those joys and graces to teach you, but yeah. I remove them, train you. Yeah. You know? And um, the, re the reason for all that is because I'm at the point now where I'm, I'm very conscious of it. I don't want to be ambitious. I don't want to be getting out there and doing all these wonderful things for God because I think I may have mentioned it before. Is, uh, I remember the priest quoting a cardinal a few years back. You know, He says, well, we judge for the, the mm -hmm. bad that we did, but also for the good that we did that was not part of God's will. Yeah. And the only way I can relate to that is going back to the point that even good intentions have their roots in self-pride. Yeah. Yeah, I've set up this prayer group. Yeah, I've did this YouTube channel on the faith. Yeah, I'm an evangelizer. Yeah, I've done this uh, religious order. Yes, I've set up this prayer group. Yes, I've done all these wonderful things and I'm in with the church and also many priests and bishops, blah, blah, blah. So what? Yeah. Really? So what? You're a Catholic celebrity? Yeah. So what? Yeah. That is not going to do you any good. And see if you take just a moment of self-gratitude of any of that, you have had your reward. Yeah. That's yeah. what the Bible says. You've had your reward. Yeah. That's it. And that's why I say even the good that was not part of God's will. You'll still use it, perhaps, no doubt, but you've had your reward. Yeah. yeah. And that's where the pride, re you need to get rid of the pride. I don't yeah. care how many prayer groups you set up or how many thousands of people you speak to or how many books you're writing in the faith. So what? Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I find that even with those good ones I like to follow, it becomes too much of a capitalist yeah. agenda with the money. You know, I'm writing this new book, Spread the Word, and you can give me donations for this and that. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder, you know. I yeah. try to avoid it, but if I sense doors are opening to go that way, then I'll follow it. I've never tried to force a door open for some time. And I would say only in the last couple of years I'm back in a good place with God. But all those years of hardship are very much there with me now. They serve a purpose, discernment. Yeah. You know, what's the main focus in life? And all I want is God. Yeah. And my marriage and my work and my joy. Whatever I'm doing, it needs to be with God. And I think that's what's leading me towards a little bit of niggling into this divine will. Because everything seems to be focused coming to that point of the next chapter, living an infused life in the divine will of God. Yeah. And that, again, it gets highlighted. What is it we need to do? Just yeah. empty of self. You know, empty of self, just receive. There's nothing we can do or give him that adds to his glory. Yeah. He doesn't need it. He chooses it, but he doesn't need it. But it's a case of being open for him to do everything. Yeah. It's his yeah. glory through his act, through the, the Holy Spirit. We just need to pray for the docility and and the, the knowledge and understanding, the wisdom to know that movement of the Holy Spirit. And I can only think back to a couple of times, maybe something like that. I mean, going back even in the early times, I don't know if it says once, I always remember a few things thinking, well, maybe that's how God's teaching me. Was this old lady come into the kitchen once in community? It was a weekend retreat. 
And I'm talking to someone and I just see her coming in and I know I was going to go and say hello to her and welcome her. But as soon as I saw this little sweet face of this old lady, uh, my stomach turned inside. Mm. But I just go, hey, how are you doing? And then the next night, never thought any more of it. Um, I was doing prayer ministry in front of the Blessed Sacrament with the prayer partner. And the lady came up and, what would you like to pray for, asked. And she says, pray for my son. He just committed suicide a couple of oh, weeks ago. God. And as soon as she said that, the same area in my stomach turned into the exact same knot, the same feeling. And it kind of hit me. And I'm like, was that the Holy Spirit, you know, being sensitive to a soul? Not having the knowledge, knowing it. But the confirmation came when she spoke 24 hours later. Yeah, and um, I've had maybe at prayer meetings three or four times that type of feeling. It was almost like you put an epipen in you, and there's like this. What's that? But yeah. there is something like a, a word, a knowledge, or something. You need to say it, and it's always confirmed. Now people go up there every week, every meeting, and they'll fire out them all, and you're just sitting okay. But I could count in one hand how many times it's happened to me over the years when I know it's real and when it's probably not been. And yeah. that's the difference. And um, there was one time I, I was actually under attack, I would say. It was sins of impurity and all that. And I was fighting the battle all day. And I'm in this office environment, um, shirt and tie on, working away. And I started becoming physically uncomfortable, you know, in my stomach and, and all that. And I knew if I, if I had to be tempted to go and, and deal with it, it would be okay, and all these temptations, but then something just hit me, like it was infused knowledge, this mm. is demonic attack, Yeah. Now, this is like six hours into the day, I'm battling with this, Yeah. and I'm becoming physically uncomfortable, Yeah. and as soon as that clicked, I'm sitting there in this office environment with like a hundred people, and I was just sitting there at my desk for a second, you know, Lord give me the strength, and if this is evil, I command you in the name of Jesus to go. I yeah. swear as God is with us. See, as soon as I say that, for the first time all day, <laughs> it was as if I went, Phew. Yeah. Just, but you know, I, so know. I felt violent. I was actually angry. I was like, how yeah. dare you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but just in that, no one knew I was praying. No one would make the signs of the cross. I was just sitting at my desk. But for the first time in six hours, it was like it just went away. The discomfort, everything just gone because I commanded it. Yeah. Physical body, physically, the, the discomfort went. Yeah. It was so, I just remembered it earlier today, actually, because I was thinking, when else have you helped me, Holy Spirit? When else have there been moments of where it's been you? And that came to my mind straight away. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, I commanded it and it happened immediately. Yeah. I know I've, I spoke before of other experiences and that, and, um, command and stuff but I think it's the silent promptings, the little nudges and you just take it with comfort and go with it, you don't, yeah. you're never going to get a complete definitive answer or evidence to certain things I wouldn't be faith otherwise Yeah, you know yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, I was just one experience and I think it's really important if you're if you're trying to help other people and and it goes back to the the pride, humility, that that this 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 constant battle they have there. If if you've if if we claim to be something like I remember in my early seminary days, I used to look up to certain seminarians and priests. And I used to think, God, this guy has it all together. His spiritual life is so formed. He looks so prepared. And I knew I wasn't. You know, I knew I knew my own life. So I I'm not that and and you and you you kind of you kind of have this inferiority complex and a lot of men do um uh you know you're 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 comparing yourself which is a normal thing to do but if men really spoke about the real issues in their life because a lot of these people that i looked up to today they're no longer they're no longer priests you know some of them left they had affairs and you know they're all the celebrity they were actually the catholic celebrities and i remember one particular priest when he left i don't want to say his name now but uh, i was so angry i said how could he do this how could he do this you know he wrote well published author all the degrees in the theology and the studies mega celebrity priest you know i used to look up to him in the community and uh, 
his brother i knew his brother as well and you know mega priest i got really angry when it all came out and he left the priesthood now obviously you know as you get older you see you see our failings in another in in a different light you know you see men's failings and look but if we were humble if we were humble and we said this is my life these are this is what i'm dealing with we would bring all men up with along with us in 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 a good proper spiritual formation other instead of creating this you know these these uh, creating personas that were really not you know we're you know really not what are we other than sinners you know at the end of the day um and we we shared our struggles that we're going through that that's that's fruit of the holy spirit that's where the holy spirit is working in being vulnerable and humble and sharing your struggles and saying look this is what i'm going through if you're going through this let, let's go to the source of truth here let's renew our lives let's let's be led out of this um and it's what's needed in the church and it's you know the holy spirit is doing <laughs> a good dose of you know humility because any of these towers that we build at some stage the holy, the holy spirit comes in that's not that's not leading to god that's leading to your own ego i think it's time to knock down these towers and he'll do it he'll do it in different yeah. stages um and that's why if you're you know we have to be humble you know not have the ulterior motives big catholic personality oh, what's the purpose of this what is the purpose that we're doing like why do this um and you know when i started blogging i had awful um qualms about doing this and i and i always felt i wasn't worthy i i always had this inward thing i like i cannot do this not my and i always felt the holy spirit prompt saying to me and I've asked, I've discussed this with other people. The Holy Spirit would say to me, I placed you here for a reason. Can you not just speak of the love, the sacred, the, this this, this incredible love of God? Can you just do it? Just speak of it. I said, okay. Like, And, and I said, at the end of the day, what have I got to lose? But um, it's horrible. It's horrible in a sense to be a personality, to put yourself forward you know, and, and then you shine light on yourself. And I said, it's not me. Just go to the source of this amazing grace, which is our Lord in the Eucharist, where you'll, you'll, where that food renews these gifts, shines these gifts, bring them out in your life. Go to that food. It's just like it was pure frustration. I said, just guys, can you not see what we're doing? And I wish if more priests did this in the church, they wouldn't you know, like if this was the way that we were as a church. You know, there wouldn't be all, uh, people said we'd, we'd all see this, but it's a gift that we've covered up and we've left under a bed and, and like a lamp under the bed. That's where the Holy Spirit is sitting, a lamp under the bed. Um, eh, Look, let's see where it goes. Yeah, the only last thing I think what you're saying there is well, to give hope for all those that are not part of the church or not given to God. I was just thinking yeah. there... Society is going, I mean, it's going kaput in so many ways, anti-God for sure, but I used to have qualms about the faithful circles where it were exclusive, but yet mm. the atheistic humanist world, uh, like not with God or conscious of God, not saying they're against anti-God, like these individuals I worked with or I met in the village or wherever. Yeah. Because with God, those are not with God in terms of practicing faiths. And those that are out doing groups and retreats and all this, and those that are just getting on with daily life, I started realizing the fact that, well, we're in a time of equality. We're in the time where we're speaking more of mental health and mental illnesses. We're in the time where we're dealing with the fact that you can no longer spank children, it's illegal. We're in the time where, you know, these are things that society's brought through at a human level, which are good things. And that is kind of a message says you need to see the fact that the Holy Spirit is in it all. Yeah. Even the things that you don't see. These people are not calling on the name of Jesus or the Holy Spirit, you know, but they're doing things that the Holy Spirit is working in there because we should have, because when I hear equality at work and then I see hierarchical bedrooms at a seminary and the hierarchical clerical pride, yeah, there's something wrong there that pulls apart. In the yeah. same day and age, you know, when I see, you know, the fact with mental illness, where it's like play the game, keep your head down, don't rock the boat. There's in work or another place we can talk about it. The, church, the guys are behind these are formators, the priests, they're behind, they don't know how to be in the group, in the normal scene, scheme of things is where it is now. 
So it's like the Holy Spirit is working more in the social square, even yeah. though people are not deliberately following the Holy Spirit. You can see the detail in a lot of ways through there that it's coming to a point, as Pope Francis says, God is not of the old, he's of the new. Yeah. God is of the new. And yeah. Augustine says, what was God doing before he created time? Nothing, he never had yeah. the time. Yeah. He's constantly yeah. creating, he's constantly moving, it's constantly evolving as he gives and gives and gives. And yeah. it's like, well, who's doing it more sometimes? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's where, and it's thanks to this new job as well, you can see the pastoral side. I mean, yesterday there was a man like with the cuck and that. And I don't always have cash on me these days, I have to admit. There was a, a two pound coin sitting there in the van, and I looked at him, and you could tell he, he was proper homeless down in his luck. And I gave him the money just as the lights were changing, and he's like, Bless you, thank you very much. Well, ah, God bless you too, brother. <laughs> yeah. And I was having a joke to Jesus. Is like, well, I definitely see him in you twice, Lord, because his beards must be bang on like yours. <laughs> yeah. Your daddy had the Jesus look about him, you know. But um, yeah, just little things like that. It's uh, even even drawn up conversation with someone that you see begging, yeah. you know, or person that's lonely, just happy for the company. Doesn't need to be faith talk, just giving them your time. Sometimes the best evangelization is listening. Yes. You know? Yes. That is number <laughs> one. Absolutely. I mean, um, it was just two things coming to mind there. Um, because the listening is really, really important. And this, if we just listened, if we just put ourselves out there to listen, to have a cup of tea, to share things. We this would transform our our church, our Catholic world. But um, you know, th there was a there was a podcast I've been listening to. There's a few podcasts I've been listening to of a man. He's the same age as myself, fifty. And when we were eighteen year olds, we entered the seminary together. He was American, I was Irish. Now he continued on and got ordained, but he subsequently left the priesthood now. And he was just talking about where he got lost along the way you know, and about bad for bad leadership formation. And and he was very, very, very candid. She, like he was saying he was a priest and he would come up with this addiction with pornography. And there was the whole shame, the whole guilt and the whole cycle of this. And, you know, I felt so sorry for this guy. I mean, not, I just said you know, to be lost like this, because, you know, I, I, I felt like that maybe in my late twenties. And because I, I felt like that, I said, no, the priest had listened for me. And I got out. I didn't, it took me a while to kind of figure stuff out, but at least, you know, I got out and he, he continued on and just to listen to his, his stories and the experience, you know, I, I really felt the Holy Spirit in, in what he was doing because he has a message for the church. You know, you have to, we have to listen. You have to open doors. You have to listen. You have to get the conversations going. Yeah. And not let men be lost. Not, this is key. And this is where the, if the Holy Spirit got into people's lives, not let them be lost. Listen, once the conversations are happening, people aren't lost. They're in a conversation. Once the conversation stop, that's when you're lost. And, um, you know, I, I'm not going to share the name of the priest, uh, although he's very, very publicly talking about his experiences. He's, he's blogged about it and he's and he's doing uh, he's doing a really key mission now in giving talks on leadership because good leadership is for formation it's mentorship it's it's humility that's where the good that's where you people will follow somebody that has true humility and able to lead towards the truth in business or in the church bad humility is all personalities it's masks it's fake it's pride it's cover-up it's you know why do we have so much abuse in the church because the holy spirit has been firmly shut out of your lives that's what's really happened. You know, I shut the Holy Spirit and I've turned inward on myself and it's all me and I'm lost. And because people are lost, what do they do? They fill their lives with other things. And that's what some traditionalists will do. And they'll, 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 they'll close it. They'll fill their lives with, you know, oh, I, I'm, I'm focusing on Latin. I'm focusing on this. I'm focusing on that. I mean, the head, the, 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 rector, the rector of the Fraternity of St. Peter Seminary in the in the US, the rector was caught with child pornography. 
And, you know, this man went into the seminary. This isn't made up. Church militants have reported about it. So I'm not, it's not defamation. This is in the, is, is in, and we have to have to ask a question. How do you live the double life? Because you're not facing your own reality of your own interior. And in order to not face yourself, you distract your life and you create two worlds and you break. These people break at some stage. And it has to be brought back down, brought back down, you know, ground up humility. And this is where the Holy Spirit has to build us on firm ground to have proper formation. If the church doesn't do this, we'll fail another generation of priests, of men. You know, you have to deal with the realities that you're facing. I'm dealing with this sin. I'm dealing with this temptation. This is who I am. This is my, this is what I'm dealing with. I will talk it out with other people, get feedback, get support. And you're not dealing with yourself and you can grow spiritually then in humility. And that's where and once you grow like that, the hum Holy Spirit comes in there and you're like, off you go, stratospheric. But when he doesn't when you don't do that, when you've blocked him out, completely blocked him out. You may not become an abuser, but your spiritual life is stale. Your apostles is stale. The spirit, the Holy Spirit says, I can't work with this soul. I can't. They're not listening. They've totally tuned out to me. Because they, they've followed a path that they I can't even get in there and listen. And I wish, I wish faith formation was has to be turned on its head, has to get back to 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 the basics of 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 the humble transformation of souls, you know. But um need, yeah. This for sure. I mean, I think I saw a video pop up on the reels there, you know, it's almost like a core drama put on just with the priest being interviewed with the lawyer. You know, what would you in the way what we say about justice, what we say about all these things, how was, was God and how why is he not answering prayers and all this? He says, you know, I asked for faith and I was led with many instances of doubt and I had to yeah. persevere. You know, I asked yeah. for courage, certain things in life came about and it was very, very challenging and intimidating. You know, and it's like then I had courage because I faced them. Then I had yeah. faith because I faced them. God doesn't just say, yeah, here you go, and you have it. Yeah. <laughs> you need to, you need to wade through the water. You need to fight the good fight. Yeah. You know, and it was an absolute brilliant way it was put. You ask for it, you're going to get it, but you're going to get it real with experience yeah. of life. And yeah. the key word for me this year is perseverance. Yeah. Persevere. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, just keep it's... persevering. Yeah. I mean, I, I I thank God for the the path He put me on because if if I had been ordained, I would have failed as a priest. And plenty of people say, "Oh no, you, Robert, you wouldn't." I would. I knew how I was, and yeah. and do you know what I mean? And then you're you're there as a as a, as a priest that, that that really doesn't have the the heart that he should have in it. Um, you know, I wish, I hope, I hope priests listening to this understand. You know, bring it, dial it back down. You know, and 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 form humble men up in the faith, um, you know that know themselves have done battle with themselves, and are you know are able to resolve their their life in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit to bring them forward, you know. But uh, yeah, I think we've gone yeah, on. I've seen. Like it, yeah. yeah, my kids are there. I can hear the family life here. I think they're saying, "Are you on too long?" I was I was filled with the Holy Spirit in this talk. <laughs> oh, God. I would like to just wish you and everyone listening to this an absolute happy and blessed Pentecost. Let it be the restart to a renewed you. Amen. And if anything there from what we've says, keep the comments coming, get in touch, yeah. share it. There's something I'm always learning from other people. Yeah. You know, certain snippets here or there, and it relates back to years ago, and then all of a sudden, it's like, ah, <laughs> I get this all the time. It's happening quite a lot just now. I've got yeah. this memory of looking back for years, and then something said here, or I see something there, or something just clicks. Yeah. Constant. You yeah, know, yeah. maybe something we've said tonight won't be in use for someone else until 10 years from now, yeah. and then it clicks. Yeah. yeah. You no, know, but please, God, it's going to become as quick as it can be, and His will always. But we are getting into new times. We are getting into a renewal. We are getting into yes. exciting times. And we are the ones to be alive now. Yeah. I mean, this is more exciting than the time of the apostles for the way. I mean, we aren't talking a little nation of Israel. We're talking the globe. 
We're yeah. talking the entire planet. Yeah. And yeah. there's a renewal, you know, and yeah, this man. 2000 years coming in 10 years time and look everything that's happening with Jesus and the mystics and Our Lady and the apparitions. It's all repeating the same stuff, that preparation yeah. And everything is from the taken. Last thing I'll say, I can't remember where it was a few years ago with one of the monthly messages in Medjugorje. It was like the way they explained it, like the father comes home and whatever the creation word was that our lady used. So when he opens up the bag with the gifts, but he's shaking it, he wants yeah. everything out. Yeah, That's what she was implying. It's there for the take, take it. He's emptying it all like never before. Yeah, We yeah. can have that thing that Jesus prayed for before he went through his passion. Amen. You know, like Amen. let's be one with God as yeah. he and the Father and the Spirit are one. Yeah. You know? Amen. Amen. Anyway. Get a break. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's it's a, it's an amazing time. But um yeah, it's uh I hope I hope uh, people have commented on our conversations, you know, some men have said they like the conversation. And I, I only would ask Let's have more of these conversations out there so that people can hear people talking about the faith, their experiences, their their problems, their struggles. And, you know, so that we talk. Do you know what? Years ago, centuries ago, this would have been normal. You know, you, you read the Philokalia, all of in Mount Athos, you know, the the all of this, this, this process of, of formation of of and would have been normal. And we seem to I don't know what we seem to have done in in, in, in the modern church anyway. But uh, look, we, it, it'll all come around. We don't have the spirit of timidity. We have the spirit. Yeah. Oh, spirit of everything. <laughs> I can't remember what it is, but it's not a spirit of timidity. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Thanks, Mark. No, thank you. It's been God a pleasure bless. as always. See you thank soon. you. God bless.